Greetings, stamp sleuths. Today we are investigating Great Britain, aka England, and uh, we're going to take a look at their stamps and their history. This is England here, in particular here, Scotland above and Ireland beside. Great Britain has the honor of issuing, as far as I understand, the world's first stamp called the Penny Black. In preface, this is a facsimile, and it was issued in 1840, May of 1840 in particular. In 1841, England, or Great Britain, issued the one penny red in preface, and it's very similar to the penny black in design. They essentially used the same uh, printing press and just changed the colors. And this one's on a bluish paper. Again, that was issued in 1841. In 1864, they began to perforate their stamps. And this is called the One Penny Rose Red. And what's interesting about this is they have plate numbers hidden in the scrolls at the sides of the stamps. Now, I can't see them with the naked eye, and I tried with a magnifying glass and couldn't make out uh, any numbers, but apparently they are. They also have numbers in the corner, al al alphabet letters, that denote something to do with the plate value, uh, plates themselves. That's the metal printing press issues that they have out. Queen Victoria was uh, uh, on those stamps. That's who that face is. This is her as a more mature woman. This is a commemorative of her reign, and she was from uh, uh, 1837 to 1901. Uh, Great Britain also likes to commemorate their notables. This is um, a stamp here that commemorates, uh, who is it here? Nelson, Lord Nelson and his victory. Some of their other notables uh, in history include people like Shakespeare. Oops, this is a Shakespeare, uh, stamp uh, commemorating Shakespeare. Some of their explorers. This is Henry... Uh, Stanley, and this is David Livingston. So there's Stanley and Livingston. This is Henry Hudson, the great explorer. And then another monarch, Henry VIII. They also commemorate some of their greater battles. This is the Battle of Hastings in 1066 which denotes the fact that uh, Great Britain or England has a huge history, longer than, of course, us in Canada, because they preceded us as being settled by uh, people that had a uh, writing. This is the um, Book of the Dead, which goes back to 1086. It's one of the earlier uh, printed, when I speak of writing, lexicons. Great Britain also had a civil war that they commemorate, 1642 to 1651. And they're interesting there. And speaking of wars, Great Britain took part in several wars, World War I and World War II. These are depicting the Battle of Britain in 1940. Uh, they have a series that England puts out commemorating D-Day. And I think they're rather splendid. They actually show photographs of the D-Day activities. And that's a set. Speaking of war, one of their other notable personages during the wartime was Churchill. And these are issues, uh, two, two that were issued to commemorate it. Uh, Churchill, what's interesting is got Queen Elizabeth, and she also took quite an active role in the war effort in regards to, I believe she ran um, ambulances. Uh, her coronation in 1952 to 1992, this is her silver jubilee, showing her silver jubilee. Uh, other royals that are commemorated, this is the wedding of Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips in 1973. A lot of stamps from England depict the royals during notable uh, events in their lives. Uh, this is um, Andrew and Fergie in Better Times. 
And of course, one of our more notable individuals, I'm just going to take these out and put them down where they can be seen a bit better, was the marriage of Charles and Diana. And then following that, her untimely and, and sad demise. And these are mourning covers because of the purple around the edges. Some of them have black in other countries. This is uh, her son and, their, and the marriage. Uh, other things that British stamps depict are some of their um, technical achievements, such as the Channel Tunnel. These are a really nice set. There's actually, I believe, four to, to the whole set. And it's depicting, in this case, English, England and France joining hands, as well as on this other side. I really like this issue. It's colorful, and it's showing an achievement between two countries. England also puts out some interesting large stamps. It's, it, it's hard to find stamps this size. You see my hand. It's almost the length of my fingers. It's quite a large stamp. And it's an international stamp exhibition, which seems fitting to have a big stamp show off the exhibition. They also did get into the holograms, like other countries did. And they do have a few issues that have holograms. This is the only one I have that uh, shows that. Uh, Great Britain is known for putting out large sets, somewhat like Canada, but they're even larger. This is the uh, um, unusual stamp of the congratulations, best wishes. So you could put one of these stamps on if you wanted, and then the salutation that goes with it. This is a complete little block, and there are more, I believe, to this set. This is uh, their set that they call the Symbols of Good Luck, and I believe this is totally complete. It is on cover to preserve it and the... Uh, First day of issue cancellation. They also have a set that I quite like called the Famous Smile Sets. And again in this they have uh, Mona Lisa. This goes on, this is not complete because they have uh, other images of, of notable smiles on it. Uh, I think uh, Laurel and Hardy are one of them. Another thing that the England does like so many other countries are first day covers. And this is the first day issue of the complete set of the Good King Wenceslas, a Christmas 1973 issue. And it's quite nice. Um, some of their covers, this is not a first day cover, uh, it, but it is a flight cover. And it's got a really interesting slogan cancellation on it. Again, it's not in perfect condition because of the markings, but it's interesting. This one is a uh, one commemorating British paintings. It's a first day cover, but it's not in perfect condition because at some point, I did not do this, but at some point the collector bent that over. But what's nice is it shows the complete set. <clears throat> Pardon me. This is an early stamp, stamp exhibition cover from 1960. And again, it shows the, um, where the, the exhibition was held. Again, this is not in perfect condition. You can see that the top is has got rough edges and there's stains on it. At some point, somebody put $4 on it. That was not me. Now I'm going to show one of my stock books here because one of the most famous sets from Great Britain is what they call the Millennium Set. Now I'm going to open this so it can be seen. And what this is, is this was put out for the Millennium. And along the side, there's a lot of, it says Millennium. 1990 something or other to 2000 I believe I can't read it my my sight is not good but what's interesting about this is they came out I believe in uh, blocks of four so if you look you can see I've got these organized in runs of four and at the side I've got uh, innovations transportation uh, England health care workers so it shows each individual set and this is a huge set this is uh, just part of it I've got another full complete page of it which I will show here. And again, it's so big that it doesn't fit in. Uh, this is my favorite, the, the butterfly faces. And at the top here, you can see there's more. This is a, a massive set, and it's a, quite an accomplishment to get all of it. It continues on the next page. And again, here. And I still have some of it at the top of my page here. So it's one of the larger sets in, in uh, England that they put out. Now I also wanted to show that England does put out back of the book 
which is their airmail, postage due, that kind of thing. Now, I've only got postage dues here. I don't know if they did actually put out airmail stamps, but these are their early postage dues, and I quite like them because though they are relatively plain, they're quite decorative. This is one half D, or B, whatever it is, and then these ones are set, uh, actually say to pay on them. So if, if somebody was owing postage on, on the received postage, that's what that means. One of my uh, other things that I like is something called Mackens or Mackens. This is a stamp, and this is the album. I got this at auction, just as you see it with this on the front. Mackin was a fellow that designed the uh, image on the front here. I'll just show, show it sideways because it's so big of the queen. And it's a, a definitive stamp. And it was de designed by Arnold Mackin in uh, the first one issued in June 1967. And it has been prolific. It continues to be issued. There are well over 5,000 varieties of color, value, perforations, printing materials like different papers, and some have security features. For example, the facsimile, pardon me, sorry about that, on the cover here has two little notches. That's a um, security issue. Now this is showing the start of my Mackin collection. These are mint never hinged. And you can see that they start in some nice, various colors. This one I, I put in because it's kind of a commemorative of one of them. And then this one was a, a one put out with Victoria on the side. So they're quite interesting. Uh, one thing that people do with Mackins is that they do what they call a calendar collection. I've mentioned this before. And I don't know if you can see it down here, but they've got different... Socked on the nose cancellations that show town and date. And when you get a lot of them together, it's called a calendar collection. And because these are so prolific, it's one of the easiest issues to actually do so in, in regards to creating a calendar collection. I'll show you this page here because it's one of my largest runs. And I'll do it sideways because it just feels, this is all different calendar dates and towns. So that's rather interesting. And then at the back of the book here, one of the things England also puts out are their Cinderella's. And Cinderella's, I'll bring those up because you can't see them, are uh, items that look like stamps, but aren't. They're not paid for postage. This says National Savings. This one here is an emergency postal service. So there must have been something going on that helped, uh, affected the um, postage, and this is the Great Western Railway. So that's interesting, those are not really stamps, they're Cinderella's, they're disguising themselves as stamps, as Cinderella disguised herself as a princess. Uh, Britain also put out cut squares, and cut squares are um, from covers. This is actually probably from a circular or a uh, letter or possibly a little card that was issued by the post office, and it shows a early British Monarch, and this one's been cut to shape. They're actually more desirable when they're cut and there's a bit of an edge on them. But a lot, I didn't do these, and a lot of people do cut them right to the very side. This one was on card, as is this one. And then others are, you know, they have shapes. This is round. And again, that's come off of a embossed envelope I believe this is what how you like to have them actually preferably to have them on the whole envelope but the reason collectors do this is if you had a collection uh, of any size all on envelopes it would take quite a lot of space you'd probably have to put it in a cover uh, situation book here's another small one and a lot of these are embossed I don't know if you can see on the back but they're embossed and that Britain put out a lot here's another one it's actually on a card. This is because it's a um, slogan cancellation. And uh, it, it just gives you, again, it came on a postcard. You can see the remnant of the postcard on the back. Uh, Britain also put letters or aerograms. And this is off of a, a letter that you could buy the actual uh, paper. And it had this on one side. And then you would put your uh, text or whatever on the other side. And you can see that this one's handwritten and this one's typed. So those were available to the British public at some point or other. 
Uh, these ones here are interesting because these are actually from, I'm not sure if they're canceled checks or banknotes, but each one of these often has a different date. That one's 1936, that's 1945. I've got a fair collection. This came out of a fellow's collection that obviously was collecting these, but it looks like they might be from a check. And you can see NK, it looks like a bank note. So the banks must have bought these pre-typed pre and uh, whatnot. This is interesting. I'm not sure if this was pre-printed on the envelope or you put it through a vending machine, but that's, that's a really interesting little piece of history. And this is a similar one. Great Britain postage paid. Quite nice. And it continues here on the other side with uh, different air. This is from an air, air mail. I did mention, I wasn't sure about that. That's from an aerogram. What's interesting about this one is it's the Mackin done on a uh, postal envelope or an aerogram. An aerogram are just envelopes pre-printed to send uh, to other countries. I've also got a collection here at the top, and a lot of people collect these of uh, airmail or uh, post office, office stickers to denote different things. This is an airmail one. And then these ones, I'm not sure, what, I don't know if this is a railway, I believe it might be. And it's got different, um, if it is railway, different uh, stops or towns that it goes to. Great Yarmouth, Yarmouth. And then I have one that says Norwich. So those are rather interesting. And again, those are um, printed by Great Britain. And that's the end of that book. One thing I did want to show you again, and you did get a brief glimpse of it, is this Royal Mail postage paid UK. This is huge. Uh, this obviously was printed out when you went in. Uh, they must have had these there. You can see there's a bit of sticky on it. It's not in the best of condition, but it is uh, a Mackin, the same design. And uh, I think these are quite lovely. Uh, I have only seen a few of these. I, this is the only one in my collection. And um, Again, I, this would have been kind of a, almost a vending machine, but not, I don't think it was. I think you went into the post office and, and had it done. Uh, I believe this is 2012 when this was issued, and it's for 2.38 pounds. Well, that's it for today. Until next time, keep on looking into and for stamps. Stamp Sleuth, signing off.